Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is review time, basically my afterthoughts or my final verdict of the Dam Designs Turbulence. As you can see, I have it right here. It looks a little bit different and first of all, I apologize because I know that this review is pretty darn overdue. But, uh, well, for good reason because I actually had a huge influx of different spinners but I never gave up on this guy at all. This is one of the nicest spinners I actually own. You guys can see that the Dam Designs logo is kind of faded and the reason why that is so is because I decided to throw this guy into my stone washing rig just to see how it turned out and well, I left it in there for a couple hours too long that's why the design is kind of faded and I kind of regret that but yeah going back to the original version mine was the brush finish and the other finish is a polished version and although I don't have it here to showcase it to you guys I'm pretty sure you are able to just search on YouTube and find other reviewers who actually own the polished version and in my opinion the both of them have very different characteristics in terms of the way it looks they both do look kind of human in a sense that there's a little human touch to it because the brushing isn't all very uniform as you guys saw in the earlier video I guess or the video I did before it looks like it's been hand brushed because every single arm features brushing in different directions and you also know that to get a mirror polish finish you're gonna have to polish it by hand so it both has a very humany kind of touch now I'm just gonna jump straight into the fidgeting aspect of it I've really enjoyed the experience on the turbulence so far I didn't expect myself to enjoy it that much because honestly speaking when I first saw it I told you guys that in the render it just looked kind of a little bit plain you know but after receiving it and seeing it in person I was like wait it totally changed my mind this looks so good it's really different it's a really unique looking quad spinner I can't even say that it's symmetrical design not like a typical X shape kind of thing these are all like offset out of the center and it gives it a little bit of an asymmetrical kind of feel but this actually like I mentioned before is modeled after a pinwheel design which is pretty cool not even a shuriken guys it's a pinwheel design a shuriken actually stems from the middle you know what I mean so this is kind of offset it's a very nice looking kind of a thing like look at that like it just looks cool, right? So fidgeting, fidgeting, yes. You guys already know I hold my spinners this way generally. It's not a pinch grip, what is this called? Flat grip or whatever, press grip, I don't know. I just hold it like that, okay? I just grip it like this. And I generally perform preloaded flicks. So I always pull back with my middle finger in this corner here. And this is really comfortable. And I'll explain to you why, okay? But it's just, take my word for it, it's really comfortable. It's very easy for you to land your finger at any point. Even if you land it like this, you can still perform a preloaded flick, see? So if you land it up here, Good, if you land it here, good, no problem. Now, when we change orientations of the spinner itself because of the asymmetrical kind of thing, no problem as well. In fact, this way might feel more comfortable to some people. If you want a little bit more surface area for your finger to land on, you're gonna enjoy this position even more. But I'm fine with both, I'll get to the reason why. It's just really comfortable either way. All right, so forward flicks are good as well because of this area I mentioned before, there's this little finger hugging thing going on and this corner here feels really good. Like it's, it's just good. There's enough surface area for you to pull back and push forward on on either orientations. Now in this particular orientation as well, there's actually not much of a difference. It's just that this dip in is on a different location. One is a bit lower, one is a bit higher depending on how you actually hold it. So that means that these both offer you a different kind of feel altogether. Trust me, it feels really different. It's just a small little shift, but it feels really, really different, but it doesn't take away anything at all from the fit stability of this guy. The fidgeting experience is really good and really unique. And basically you'll be able to enjoy fidgeting with it either orientation. It's just really cool. Now I'm going to change up the grip because some of you actually hold it this way with the middle finger and thumb grip. So on the fourth finger is the same as what I mentioned before with your middle finger. It feels different either way but, but it feels so good. It feels really really good. Now onto the index finger flick. Whether you pull back or you push forward. This is not like, how should I say this? This is, okay it's not uncomfortable at all. At all doesn't matter which orientation you actually hold it. So if you prefer the dip on the further part of the spinner or further in, then you're gonna enjoy this direction or this orientation. If you enjoy the dip further out, see, it's, it's just not a problem guys. All in all guys, this thing is super fishable and it gets damn solid spin times. Now I'm not gonna do a spin time video because as mentioned before, included with this spinner are two different bearings. One is a shielded bearing, which is by SKF, and that is basically a one drop bearing competitor. And the other one is an unshielded dry hybrid ceramic bearing, which, you know, it's noisier, but also offers you a longer spin time. So really it depends on what you want out of the spinner and what's your style. And in order for me to be fair, I'm not gonna give a spin time because we all already know. Lubricated bearings are gonna give you a really, really smooth and silent spin. 
dry bearings and unshielded bearings especially it's going to give you a noisier but longer spin time so really either way right either way i'm talking about fidgetability here this thing is super fidgetable so if you want something with a little bit more of a feedback and some resonance in your hand then use the hybrid ceramic bearing but if you want something really quiet really silent and really discreet then use the shielded bearing use the skf lubricated bearing that's that's what i will say but i've really really enjoyed this really look at how balanced this is i mean look at how balanced this is, this is just super awesome guys there's no wobble look at that okay i'm gonna use the right word there's no judder <laughs> judder before going on to my final verdict, I want to talk a little bit about the other button that was included in the spinner package as well. At first, I said, hey, they look like they're the same button. They look like they are basically identical. But there is a difference, a very, very, very slight difference. Now, to be fair, I've stonewashed this button a little bit. But, you know, stonewashing doesn't actually eat away material. Not much, actually. It's just in the microns, right? But I'm going to just bring these buttons really close to you guys so that you can see what the difference exactly is. I'm going to try basically to show you the difference. All right. Now, if I bring it really, really close, you notice that the steps on these guys, like the in-between lines, look a little bit darker than on these, right? They look a bit more pronounced. These guys look like they have a cleaner, thin concentric circle in between each step, right? They do, right? If you look at it this way, look. And that's because the steps on the other button are not chamfered inwards. So these are almost like, how am I going to describe it to you guys? They're 90 degree steps going inwards, 90 degrees. But these guys are chamfered, so they're not 90. They're maybe, let's just say, for example, 60 degrees. So they're 60 degree steps inwards like that instead of 90. So they both provide a different tactile feedback. And it's something that you cannot tell until you actually hold it. And I'm not able to even feel it on my thumb because maybe because my thumb has a wider surface area, I'm not so sure. But on my index finger, I was really able to tell the difference once I paid attention to it. And it really now just depends on which is the kind of feel that you like. Now, don't get me wrong though. Either of this is going to feel great because there's no sharp edges on it at all. Either one. They've been finished very nicely. And this, this, it all feels so comfortable. So it really such a minor thing such a small little detail but still included as well that's that's something that i really wanted to give props to so adrian of damn designs good job on this this is actually a pretty damn good but yet so subtle detail that really changes the character of the grip itself you guys know i'm a button junkie right so this really <laughs> this is awesome i know i've already stonewashed this guy because i kind of wanted to match the finish but it doesn't take away anything from the angled edges. So it really depends on what you guys like. And it's really, really nice that Damn Designs actually included these two without even saying much, you know, just putting it there. So now you guys already know the two differences. It's really, really cool. Last but not least, I have this other button known as the Vortex button. And it is basically in the same style, but it is wider. So those of you who actually want one of the buttons in this kind of style, and I believe that these are the angled ones, not the straight chamfers the angled chamfers like this button over here not the 90 degree cut i don't even know how to explain that but yeah you guys get what i'm trying to say if you want something a bit wider a little bit more surface area in totality then get one of these vortex buttons they actually fit very nicely as well on the turbulence so not a problem and these also go on to other spinners as well with the bearing retention system i don't know if these are still available but well, at least you know that they're out there in the market and on top of that the side profile of these buttons are a little bit different as well these edges are more pronounced, they're more flat versus the original buttons that come with the turbulence. So, vortex buttons, guys. I'm gonna put this aside and last but not least, just quickly giving you a, another size comparison. I know you guys have seen the size comparison before, but I'm just gonna do it for this video because, you know, since it is a review video after all. The height of it is about the same size as a stubby, but if you measure it this way, then yeah, slightly taller. But not too big and still very pocketable, very, very comfortable spinner. Gonna put my buttons back on and then jump right into my final verdict, guys. Okay, here we go. Final verdict on the Turbulence Spinner. This is going for $59.99. And I believe that it is currently on pre-order for the second run. I do not know if there will be a third run. But judging by the way Damn Designs run stuff, they basically don't really keep much stock on hand. They usually go by small pre-order runs. So we've already seen a total of about three runs for the Triad. And the first run of the Invictus is over. But I also know that they actually have this 
on the second run right now. And I gotta say that I don't know when the closing deadline for the second run is, but if you're interested in getting one of these, you better hop on it quick. These are only available in stainless steel, but two finishes. One is a polished finish, which is super shiny, super mirror if you kind of want that beautiful reflection whenever you're, you know, you're fidgeting with it or when you want to watch it spin and well, blind yourself basically, then get the polished version. And there also is a brush version. Now for a better look at the brush version, please watch my older video on this guy because this one has already been stonewashed. You can see some of the brushing marks there slightly, but I decided to try my hand at stonewashing this guy and uh, uh, well I have to say that I actually enjoy this finish but it's a personal kind of thing you know what I mean on top of that it comes with two buttons one with a more pronounced chamfering going in for the steps one with an uh, I guess a more angled kind of chamfering so really just two different feels it comes with two bearings as well one SKF shielded and lubricated bearing and one unshielded hybrid ceramic bearing which is dry it comes with a very beautiful box and a nice pouch as well I don't think I'm missing out on any other details of this guy. I don't I don't think so. Yeah. So for $59.99, first of all, value for money. It is worth it. It's rare to find an under $60 spinner with all the accessories that come with this turbulence spinner. So I really think value for money. But this little spinner over here, this turbulence, okay, what has won me over is the fact that the whole spinner is just different from almost every other spinner that I've handled so far, not just because it is a quad design, but the way each arm is made. Now, let me give you an example. I'm gonna get the Invictus because I have the Invictus right here. The triad's in the box. But what I want to say basically is every other spinner design that you basically see out there in the market always features flat areas on top, right? It's always flat at some point. And then it's got chamfering on the side and angle cuts and everything. And here, well, it's different because, well, the Invictus one actually features a very nicely rounded thin area, but most spinners actually feature a flat side. Now, when we talk about the turbulence, the turbulence, yes, it does have a flat side, but up here, there are no flat surfaces at all. And that was something that I really didn't even realize till I started to fidget with it quite a bit. And I was thinking, why is it so comfortable to just keep landing my finger right here and then just being able to immediately regenerate the spin, whether or not it's being a pull back or push forward. See that? Like there's no stop in between, even for my index finger, just back, forward, back, forward. And I only realized when I thought about the index finger part, it's because of this angled area over here. This kind of goes in line, you see, with your finger for you to just hook over like that. With this rounded area over here making it so comfortable, but it just lets you do this to pull back. And when you stop it, okay, and you want to pull it back, it kind of just sits right there. And then when you push it forward, this angled area is not curved in such a way that you feel your fingers slip out, right? Now, even if you hold it in the other orientation, if you have your finger up here and you want to pull back, you notice that because of this nice curve over here, your finger kind of slides. See that? It slides so that you can just push it forward. And if you're doing the same thing, but you're pulling back, okay, even if you land up here, you have a nice edge or nice corner for you to pull back on. But if you land here, it's not a problem as well because it's going to slide right out like that. Look, I'll just show you, okay? Look, no problem at all. And because of that, I started to question why I was so comfortable fidgeting with the spinner with my middle finger or my fourth finger. And then I realized it's because of these edges here. It's not flat at all. They're not flat edges. They are at a, such a gentle angle with the top here being so nicely rounded as well that wherever you land, you're going to find yourself with a very comfortable spot to start your spin. Up here, it's comfortable. See? Down here, not a problem because of this. I don't even know if this was intentional. If it was, Adrian, wonderful job, man. Really wonderful job. But if it was not intentional, and if it was just originally meant to be a design nuance to try to make that, in my opinion, pretty boring render into something a little bit more, I guess, edgy or a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I suppose, by adding these angles over here, then I would say that, Adrian, you've basically stumbled upon a gold mine. You know what I mean? This is... Beautiful. And I don't even think that I'm explaining it very well. I don't even think I'm doing it justice. You guys really have to try it out. I know that $60 might be a little bit expensive for some of you, but if you're looking to get yourself a quad spinner and you want something a little bit different and something with a very unique feel, on top of that, something that will definitely not disappoint you at all to make every single dollar of your purchase worth it, then really just try your hand on a turbulent spinner. You will not regret it. And I'm really, really happy with this. Like, this is one of the most vegetable spinners that I've handled so far. Now, I really, really, really like this. I really think that this is a very, very good innovation. 
intentional or not, definitely makes the turbulence stand out among the entire sea of spinners out there with all these flat edges right here. I can't even think of any other spinner right now without a flat edge like this. It's just slipping my mind, guys. If there is any, please share them in the comments below. But at this point of time, I'm not able to think of any because this, just such a simple thing, it's just awesome. It just works so well for the turbulence spinner. And that is it, guys. That is my final verdict on the turbulence spinner. Like, if you never owned a quad spinner before, try this one. If you already have other quad spinners and stuff like that and you want something really different, try this one. In my opinion, you won't regret it. I'm gonna get this guy out of the frame. So, once again, guys, as always, links in the video description below. Thank you so much for sharing in this slice of my life with me, and I hope that I provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the Turbulent Spinner by Damn Designs is a spinner for you. I really enjoy it. I like the design. It's got very, very unique nuances about it, and you really have to try it in order for you to know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. And I will catch you all in the next slice of my life, everyone. And last but not least, Gaga Boost!